So I was still of the mindset that like, well, the people who make this stuff must know better than I do, right? And like, so object-oriented programming and weird template m metaprogramming stuff is obviously good, right? And so that was mostly my mindset going into RAD was that sort of stuff. And I did all sorts of those things. Like if you looked at the math library, then it was weird, you know, it was templatized on like the dimensions of the matrix and whether or not you wanted to use double or float and all the sorts of things that you would normally consider now about like, you know, pretty standard template metaprogramming stuff. Uh, and of course, like I said, it was still kind of annoying though at that time because things that you would never expect the compiler to internal compiler error on now, it may well have. Even something as simple as like, oh, it's just M by N matrix of double. You might have hit some things because you were trying to put a, you know, a trait in somewhere effectively. Like so you're trying to put in some type definition to a thing and it wouldn't be able to reference the thing. And you're like, oh, okay, whatever. Um, so I went in with that mindset. And when I was going to RAD, that's, that's kind of what I knew. I had learned programming C as a child. And um, I was pretty proficient in it, I guess I would say. I learned C++ along the way uh, after I had gotten out of high school and like was exposed to it from other developers. Thought it was presumably a good idea because like why would people be doing it if it wasn't? The same, by the way, I see the same sentiment on Twitter, right? And people are always like, yo, you know, these people, they must know what they're doing. I'm like, no, like disabuse yourself of that notion. A lot of people who make languages don't, don't have any idea what they're doing, right? It's like, how many, think of your own self. How many times have you been quite certain you were doing something correct only then to realize you were doing it wrong? Other people aren't magically smarter than you. They, they, don't, they don't know the future any better than you do, right? So you have to always be willing to expect that not only is what you're doing possibly wrong, but what other people are doing and claiming is good also could be wrong if you can't verify it. Like if you can't go and independently verify that they're correct using some other scheme, they're just as likely to be wrong as you are, unfortunately, because no one knows the future, right? Um, and so that was mostly the skill set that I went in there. And uh, when I went there, what I was doing at the time when I first joined was uh, Rad kind of wanted to start doing some 3D stuff. They didn't have anyone there who did 3D, really. Uh, so I wrote the first version of their character animation library, Granny. which kind of, yes, uh, which kind of has a couple of different components. It's got exporters because at the time there was no standard export format that included everything you needed. Like nowadays you kind of, well, at least you cross your fingers and you hope that there's a standard export format like Filmbox or something that will have everything you needed from the tool, right? None of that existed at the time. So if you wanted to extract animated characters from a tool, you needed an exporter. That was just, you just had, there was no way to actually use a, uh, an export feature from the tool and get all the data we actually needed. And then also there was a runtime component. So it was basically exporters for 3D Studio Max and Autodesk Maya. I think Autodesk Maya was, I, I, it might've only supported Max in the first version and then Maya in like a point update. I don't remember the order. We could go back and look at the change log, but it was at least Max with Character Studio. And then Maya came shortly thereafter because that's the other standard. Later, I think we added, like I added Lightwave, uh, but you know, it was really Max and Maya that the two were the two big ones. They still are today. Uh, and, and then it has a runtime component, which like loads these things and plays it back for you, right? So I wrote that. <clears throat> and that was uh, all done in like the C++ template uh, inheritance hierarchy, object-oriented style, whole thing. So like, again, people don't think I've ever done this stuff. And it's like, oh, they just don't he doesn't understand the magic of object like, No, I have shipped entire libraries in this style. I know exactly what they look like and how to do it. If you wanted me to ship an object-oriented library today, I could easily do that for you, right? Um, and so I shipped it in that style and it was an epic disaster. No pun intended, because it's just rad game tools at the time, right? Uh, and the reason for that was very simple. Shipping object-oriented code, object code sucks for integration. It's all of the principles of object-oriented fight the ability to integrate stuff. It's the whole paradigm is a lie. The, the lie is that if something's object-oriented, it will be easier for someone else to integrate because it's all encapsulated. But the truth is the op opposite. The more walled off something is, the harder it is for someone to integrate because there's nothing they can do with it. The only things they can do are things you've already thought of and provided an interface for. And anything you forgot, they're powerless. They have to wait for an update. 
So the entire concept of object-oriented programming is just, in my opinion, bad. It's just, it's a bad idea. It doesn't do what people claim that it does. And so what we did was for two, I decided is like, I don't think that went well. And when I look at the other programmers here who are much better than I am, like Jeff Roberts, who's the guy who does did the uh, Smacker and Bink, the original versions of those, effectively by himself, um, and uh, John Miles, who was the person who wrote the Miles sound system, which was the standard sound system for gaming through the whole DOS era. Uh, they didn't do this stuff. Like they, they didn't use that really. They, they used C for most of these things, right? They didn't use objects. Jeff doesn't even use .cpp files. He's just .c. <laughs> he's like, I don't need any of it. I don't care, right? He's, he's so far in that direction, right? So I'm like, you know, if programmers better, who I can actually watch being better than me, not some random person who happens to be on a C++ committee who I look at what they've done. And I'm like, I don't, doesn't look like they've really necessarily done anything I'm all that impressed with. I look at these people who are like, absolutely crush what they're working on. They don't use this stuff. Why? Right. So for Granny 2, what I decided to do was I'm just going to start back at C and I'm only going to use features I can prove saved me code. Right. Like if I can't prove that this thing is actually saving me time because I can write the code one way and the other way and see that, okay, now that was actually better. I'm not using it. So Granny 2 is done almost entirely in C. It doesn't even use operator overloading for math. Um, and basically what I found is 99% of the things in C++ are not useful. <laughs> operator overloading, the one that I was like, this is actually useful, right? Uh, because I looked at the math code after I did that, and I was like, this is much more concise. Because I wrote it in Blaz style. I don't know if you're familiar with that. It's basically like where you just have, you have all your primitive math functions and you just, so like a, an actual thing like AX plus BY plus CZ is like a bunch of like scaled X, uh, scaled FMAD, right? Like, you know, or just, just FMAD, I guess we would call it, right? So it's like FMAD, 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 okay. with an accumulator, right? <laughs> oh, and okay. It's like, okay. It's like, I'm like, nope, it's hard to read this code. Like, <laughs> like this is legitimately not good. When I go back to this code and I want to edit it, it's a pain in the butt. Like, like, I think it's actually better the other way. And yeah, maybe it's better to do that in some limited cases where I really need to control if the compiler is like screwing something up or something like that. Sure, I'm not saying it's always best to have something look like math, but having operator overloading so I can just do vector math using normal symbols is better. I'm very confident saying that now. So I'm like, if I see a language that doesn't have operator overloading, I don't want to use it, right? So to this day, I still use CPP files. Even people always ask me, like, why? Like, why? You know, you don't, your code doesn't really look like C++. Right? I'm like, yes, it, it does. It requires operator overloading. So there are some things from C++ this that one, I don't. This one yeah. feature. <laughs> um, sort of. I mean, I, I, I sort of use function name overloading sometimes, too. Like, I want my code to just read, like, is valid, parentheses, a thing. I don't necessarily want to have it be is valid gromulus and is valid, right? It just, it adds cognitive overhead because I'm like, I'm just asking if this thing is valid. I don't care which one it is. Go find the threat, right? Um, so just basic compile time dispatch is what we might call that. I think that's good as well. And C makes that harder, right? Uh, so there are some very limited things from C++ that have actually been official. Um, templates are trickier. Because templates, the reason I don't use them is not that reason, right? Like inheritance hierarchies are just garbage. They don't work. I would never use them again. Um, there's way better ways to do everything they do. But templates are much trickier. And what I sort of learned about templates at that time was that the cost of using them outweighs the benefit of using them, which is a very different statement than this thing is garbage, right? Templates do do useful work. They are just usually more trouble than they're worth. The syntax is pretty poor. Troubleshooting them as soon as they get at all complicated is not very much fun. They don't read cleanly after you're done with them, typically, just because of bad decisions in the way that they were set up. But they are at least trying to do something that would have been useful. And so what I usually say, you know, it's like, People hear me talk online. I'm always like, object oriented programming is a waste of time. Don't do it. You'll never hear me say it about generic programming. Generic programming, I think, is a good idea. 
I think C plus temp C plus plus templates, you could go either way. You could come down on the mm, I'm saving time here at the margin, so it was better to use them. I think you can also come down the side of I don't save time. If I just typed it in again, it would have saved more time because I can read it better and customize it easier than the template version. People scream and yell if you say one or the other, but it's like, no, I, I really think that's an area where C ended up just in this really uncomfortable middle zone of if it had just been twice as good as it was, they'd actually buckled down and made this really good generic programming, then it would be a no brainer to use it. If it had been just a bit worse, it'd be a no brainer to say never use it. But as it is, they hit this <laughs> middle area of like, if someone asks me, should I use templates or not? I'm like, eh? Yeah. I, I can't, it, there's not a right answer to that question. I could defend either side fairly vigorously. And I just don't, so it's just personal preference, right? It's like, you have to figure out whether this is working better for you or not. It's that simple, right? 